Good morning. How are y'all doing today? I know today is uh, Tuesday. I had to take off yesterday some personal issues that was going on in our family's lives. If you're if you're joining us, remember to share our um to share our broadcast and and everything. Good morning, Debbie. I uh I know God is going to do some great things this uh today. For some reason, if anybody has an iPad and and if you could tell me why that all of a sudden Facebook doesn't want to work on my iPad. I mean, it just will literally go and crash and um and uh it will go and crash and and not uh and not let me open it. So, I uh my husband is working, so I need to share it on my page. So if you give me a second. share it on my page okay okay let's get going um you know they're saying it's going to be cold by the end of this week i'm just doing some small part talk i'm waiting for people to come online it's going to be cold by the end of this week i have a couple of things that god has impressed on my heart today um he he pressed he he started dealing with me about compassion he started dealing with me yesterday about compassion and about um, things that God is doing in, in people's lives, and um, and he is he was showing me some things about compassion and about how God deals with compassion and the different uh, the different the different words for compassion you know one of the words for compassion is wound is a womb it's a it's a, a it's the ability to carry uh to carry something and so i i thought that was very interesting so we're gonna get into the study of compassion because see we were we were dealing with elements of the anointing last week and we were dealing and we we dropped off with the word and so we're going to deal with today, good morning, Mallory, we're going to deal with today compassion in with ministry. Because without compassion, you can't have an effective ministry. Because if you're not compassionate and are not moved with compassion, then you cannot uh, minister a, a, effectively into people's lives. And because uh, it says even Jesus, it's, it says if you read in the Gospels, it says that he was moved with compassion. Compassion can be interchanged with, with mercy or with um, uh, pity. And uh, in Genesis chapter 19, well, verse 16, it was the first time compassion was actually used. And it was when Lot and his wife was in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels of the and the angels of the Lord came there to rescue them because of the righteous prophet of Abraham, because Abraham, if you go back and read he, Abraham, I believe it's chapter eighteen, the the um uh it says the Lord came to him and he interceded on behalf of Lot. Well, what if there's five people? What if there's 10 people? Would you still destroy the city? And so he sent the angels there to remove Lot because Lot was a righteous man. Lot sat in the gate. So Lot knew some of the stuff that was going on in, uh, in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he had other sons and daughters in Sodom and Gomorrah. He just didn't have, he just had two virgin daughters at home. And so when the angels of the Lord came there, we know men, if you read the story, that um, the wicked men of Sodom and Gomorrah came and they wanted to have 
uh, relations with uh, the angels. But in God's compassion, he Lot was dilly-dallying. You know, when God has you going around, good morning, Lisa, when God has you going around and he sends someone specifically in your area to get you out of a situation, you cannot procrastinate, especially when it's a divine appointment. And so when God sends somebody and the angels came and said, you have to leave this place, gather your stuff. And Lot goes, well, let me go get my other people. And he says, you don't have time for this. Something is going to happen. You know, God gives us now, he gives us the ability to have this knowing in us that something is going to happen. You know, before a major event in your life, if you really think about it, you'll realize that, hey, something's not quite right here. And I need to leave or it's it's and and you leave how many times have you heard somebody that was going to get on a plane and they go you know at the last minute I decided I changed my mind and that plane went down in a plane crash that is God forewarning you that something's going to happen so it says in Genesis 1916 it says that that the angel had compassion he had mercy he had pity he literally pulled them by their hands and pulled them out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and so that we know that when he did that that the city went up in fire and brimstone and so you know there went the story there but the compassion part was he pulled them out of that situation it says in Psalms 91 that if you ca if you dash your foot against a stone the angels are there to lift you up and bring you about so that you're not hurt and so I believe that angels are there to protect you I know we were driving down um, right before my son left to go to South Africa the first time we were driving down uh, Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge and whenever you would go off with Micah it would always be a, a, a we would call it a Micah adventure because you never know what is going to take place and so we're on our way to to the interstate but our, on our mind we had CC's coffee because we wanted coffee that day and both my daughter and my son and even myself to a degree felt we should go on the interstate but we didn't obey the the no the the unction in us and so we kept going and all of a sudden we heard this pow and this car comes and it's literally screaming towards our car and it literally gets to it should have came in on my side on the passenger side and flipped us but it was like some it was like you could see something was there it literally slapped the car out of place it turned in front of us and hit the other car and we weren't damaged at all in fact it was like how come y'all didn't y'all didn't get nothing there was not even a scratch that is god's mercy on you at that particular time so but what i want to concentrate on and and i'll give you some definitions see that 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 word in genesis um is uh uh I would pronounce it Camille, 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 Camilius, but that's not the right word. It is, um, it's, it's mercy and compassion. And the, the other one is to have, to spare our pity is the primitive root of that word. So God sometimes has, he, he, he spares us and he has, um, pity on us. And then, um, the next time we see that word is in Genesis 43, 14, when it talks about that um, Benjamin was going to be held by Joseph for ransom. And that word means to be, to have a womb or compassion or it means to love so deeply, to have mercy and compassion and tender affection and, and everything. It's, what, it's to hold something so close to your bosom that it, it is so precious to you. And so that's what Benjamin was to Jacob because that was his son born by Rachel and he loved Rachel. And so, but 
the other word, when God talks about compassion and mercy and his name, it will be referred to as the second one, to love deeply uh, as, a, as God, to show compassion. And so we see this particular one in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14. And I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. Here you have the Israelites. They have they have taken, they're around Mount Sinai, came out of Egypt, and they have decided that they were going to offer a sacrifice to a foreign God, to a, make their own God, because they didn't think God was moving fast enough. And so they thought that they needed to help God out. So here it is. He was, he came to Moses and he says, I am going to wipe out this evil, wicked, stubborn people. And Moses is no, you're, you can't do that. You're not going to start all over with me. You're going to continue with these people. I brought them out because of you. And I will not go any further unless I have your presence, unless I have your glory, unless I have your compassion, your mercy, your loving kindness. And so it goes on that, that in the midst when God says that, yes, I'll be with you, he gets there and Moses says, show me your glory. And see, people think that the glory of God is some mystic thing that happens and it is something that um, is uh, taking place and um, we know it's a cloud or whatever, but we get a, un, we we think it's something so mystic or whatever but it's not god's glory sometimes is his love and his compassion and his 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 showing his mercy towards us so Moses is asking this question, let me, show me, show me your glory. Show me who you are. Show me who you are. It would be like someone coming up and if you're married, show me your wife. Because it says that we are the glory of the man. And so how we are taken care of is how he is looked upon as someone who provides or someone who is, 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 um, taken care of. If you're a, a, a person that you've seen women that are abused, when women are abused, they are, are um, uh, they don't have a shine about them. They get old and haggard. And so when God says, um, when, a, when a woman is the glory of of her husband, if he, if your husband is one who nurtures and takes care of you, or your father nurtures and takes care of you, and you have a shine, you have a a um a a, a presenting of someone who is good, of someone with a shine, a beauty about you. Even you may not be the most beautiful person, but you have that beauty about you that goes around that says that you are confident and are going someplace. So God says that I can't show you my glory because the glory was being prepared. God has a glory. We were um, clothed in the glory before Adam fell. But see, after Adam fell, for man to be able to contain the glory of God again, his son had to come and die for us. And who is the son's glory? Those that have accepted him as his savior and has become his bride. She'll be adorned and she'll be um, clothed. And she'll be clothed in righteousness. She'll be without wrinkle, without blemish. She'll be spotless. And she'll be able to show forth the glory of God. And she will be a glitter one in the earth. As we see as arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is upon you. Arise and shine, glitter one. Arise and shine, the glory of God. The bride of Christ. The one who is waiting for her bridegroom to come back. But he says, I can't show you. No one can see my face as of yet. But 
I will take you. I want you to stand right here. And I will take you and I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. I will hide you in Jesus. It was a foretelling that, you know, you're going to be hidden in Jesus. It was a type shadow of what was to come in the New Testament. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to put my hand over you. And that when I take my hand off of you, that you will be able to see that my goodness and my mercy are my compassion, that I'm a loving and kind God. I'm compassionate and I show compassion to whom I will show compassion and I will show love to whom I would show love to. And so God saying that today I will show love to who I will show love to and he will show compassion to you. He will show mercy to you. He will show kindness to you. Even when you make, make a mistake, God God will be there and he will show you his loving kindness to you and towards you because you are now showing forth the glory of his son. Because remember, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, that uh, this is that we have this hidden um, we have this hidden treasure in earthen vessels. For the excellency of the power that may be of God and not of ourselves. So we have this hidden um, uh, treasure, this hidden treasure of glory that's in our lives. Good morning, James and Rhonda. And we have this in our lives that's showing forth what God is doing for us. And so that's why when Moses was hidden in the rock and God took his hand and he then he let it go. So he's seen his hind parts of compassion and mercy. You know, it says that that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. So here it is. God's put this earthen vessel us he put this treasure in us this treasure of who he is of his glory of his spirit and it resides within us so that we can shine and show forth the glory of christ within us and so that's why how do you get the anointing out of you how do you get this treasure that's in you to be produced out of you well it says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also that Jesus may be made manifest in our body. For we, we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, and that the life also of Jesus may be manifested in this mortal flesh. So what this is saying, what this is saying is, is that in order for, the, for Christ to be formed in you, it says that he is always going to be pressing us. Remember, remember when I said that the oil, that Gethsemane, that, that beaten oil was what lit up the, um, the temple. Well, sometimes God has to press us and put us in a pressure cooker and seems like everything is being hit at us at one time. It seems like once you get up, it's you're being hit again, but you're not going to go down because why? There may be something in your flesh, this mortal body, the way you think that exalts itself against the um, knowledge of Christ. And he says, I'm going to press and I'm going to press and I'm going to press because you do not live by the flesh, but you live by the spirit of God. And in order to get that anointing out of you, in order to get that word out of you, in order to get that pumping out of you, I have to send trials and tribulation to cause you to have this character of me, of my fruit and my anointing to flow through you. And because of that, I'm going to allow this to happen, but know that I never leave you. I never forsake you. You may be crushed 
crushed. You may be perplexed. You may be feeling like you're dying on the inside or dying all around you. And yes, you are. You're dying to who you are so that Christ can be formed in you. So that the word can become flesh through you. So that people can see his glory without wrinkled, without spot, without blemish. And so, and, and later on in that same chapter, it says, that we have it in verse 13 it says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written I believe and therefore I have spoken we also believe and therefore speak knowing that we which were raised up with the Lord Jesus shall raise up also by Jesus and present us with you for all the sake for all things and for all your sakes, that the abundance of grace might, through the thanksgiving of the many, re redound or rebound to the glory of God. And we know that grace is something that is unfavorable, due, kindness, mercy, compassion, pity that's what that that means to have favor of stewardship to have favor of grace to be able to come in together and 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 suck together to be able to partake of the same anointing but then the the whole thing of it is so that verse uh seven verse 16 it says for which cause we faint not but through our outward Man, though our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. So remember when I said God gives us fresh oil, fresh anointing daily to overcome, to be abundant, to have things in our lives, to have fresh manna, to be able to work what he wants worked in us, to change our environment around us. It's a pressing, it's a, it's a coming together to cause us to see who God is in our lives and so that people around you can come and pick up that fruit. For why? For our light affliction, which is but a moment, worketh for us for more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. So in other words, the eternal weight of glory, the finished product, is that we will take off this mortality and put on immortality, but that people will see the glory of God come through. How do you do signs and wonders? How do signs and wonders produce in your ministry or how the signs and wonders produce in your life it is produced by the crushing of your flesh and the anointing coming alive within you to flow out of you you becoming a glitter one you may become very light light and then all of a sudden you're shining bright it's because you prime the pump you begin to pray in the spirit you begin to read the word you begin to exercise it you begin to go forth you begin to watch what god is and watch what he will do watch how he would come about in you watch how he'll form in you that's the compassion of god see compassion causes you to propel yourself to the next place in him you can see it you can understand it and you can go to that next place and when you see someone who's hurting someone who is 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 failing at what they're doing you will not see them through your eyes but you'll see them through the eyes of Christ and go but if they'll do this if I tell them to do this if I give them this word if I encourage them this way then God will come along and he will cause them to move I am a great I am a great believer that the word of God changes a person's life if it is anointed and the word of God may take a little bit to change and it will bring about a deliverance in someone's life you just have to prime the pump and you have to go and work it and you have to believe and as long as you have solid foundation and the anointing is flowing God can change your very DNA and who you are all you have to do is believe 
and let God take the pro take you through the process. Remember, it's not easy. It says in John 15 that the vine dresser, the father comes in and he prunes the vine. And how does he prune it? With his word, his word. It says his word has made you clean. His word has made you to become pruned. He comes in and he prunes. Hey, this is not what it's supposed to be. Ah, oh, you're doing this and doing that. And I need you to stop because this is where I want to take you. I want you to cultivate a lifestyle of love towards people. And I want you to understand that my mercy and my compassion is everlasting. And I am a God that always cares and shows mercy. And I will show mercy to everyone whom that is willing to receive it. And so that's why it says that who can separate us from the love of God? No one. No one can separate you from the mercy of God except you, except your sin, except for things that you're going through that you will not allow God to come in and show you mercy. He gives you such mercy. Great compassion and mercy and comfort. See, compassion can also comfort someone. And in the comfort of God's compassion, he will comfort. I believe that when God took his hand off of Moses' face and he was hidden in the rock, hidden in Jesus, that when he seen his goodness and mercy, that helped Moses go through 40 years in the wilderness with a people that would not always submit to God. It gave him the strength and the understanding and the power to go through it. God's compassion towards you and your compassion and love to people will propel you to go and continue to do the work regardless of how your flesh feels, regardless how you feel neglected, regardless how, in fact, really you shouldn't feel neglected because you are doing it unto the Lord and he gives you his rewards and his blessings and he calls you a faithful servant. Well, that's all for today. Tomorrow, please tune in tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow between 10.30, 10.45. And don't forget tonight, we have our Bible class. Apostle Jason Mitchell will be speaking and it'll be on at 7.15. So don't forget, share um, our broadcast, share, let people know, invite them in to see the broadcast tonight. It's going to be exciting. He's going to wrap up Mark chapter 4. And then this Sunday, I, I'm going to be putting out the, the artwork with the address. We will be at Light City with Apostle, uh, Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas and in New Orleans East, Apostle Jason and I will be bringing the message that morning. And so come out if you're in the New Orleans, Slidell area or around, please come in and um, let's fill that house up and join us. We will not have our regular service here in Hammond. Our, our, our ministry and everyone in our church will be traveling with us to uh, uh, Light City to be with Chief Apostle and his church family as we minister. So again, if you would like to come, please uh, message me. I will be putting out the artwork today. And one other thing, if you would be a prayer partner with us, please either private message me or put it in um, the space below that you are standing with us in prayer and believing for God to move things. And I believe that God will bless you and exceedingly put uh, uh, the same anointing on us that he will put into your lives to, to change you radically into who he's called you to be. And again, if you would like to partake in a seed, you can go to our website and give that as well. So we thank you. And, and one other thing, don't forget to pray for my son. He's in South America. He's um, getting to South Africa for his next leg. Um, he's a missionary. Just remember him. It's Micah and Carrie Mitchell. Um, I like to say God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Goodbye.